Hello everyone, this is Liwei Model. So far, I showed you several train set and end scale if you wanted to start in that scale. I realize this is not the most popular scale out there, and it's being dwarfed by the amount of people who are using HO scale. So today, we've got a train set in HO scale. Is it worth to start with this? Why do I have a carpet underneath? You'll find out pretty soon. So, uh, the product we're gonna look at today is made by Backman. It's called Thoroughbred. And it's part number 00691 by Backman. So, what do we have in here? Well, we of course have a train, one locomotive, two cars, and a caboose. You're also gonna find some tracks, power pack. And it tells you that it has EasyMate knuckle coupler, which are pretty much compatible with every single other North American coupler. So, uh, on the back of the box, you got a bit more details and uh, on what each of these things are and features that they have. Shows you also a couple of things you can build if you buy more track. So, why the carpet, you may ask? Well, because of this. Those tracks are supposed to be able to be used on floor, table, carpets. It says that no nail screws or special tools is required. Well, we're gonna find this out. So, let's open it up. So, inside of this, we have a box and a plastic tray. So, in the box, what are we gonna find? Well, here's the power adapter, pretty standard. This power adapter is good for about one amp. So, probably one, two, maybe three locomotive maximum at the same time. Next! We have this here. A standard Batman power supply. So these power supply are pretty much standard. Very, very light. And uh, yeah, you're gonna find these in a lot of uh, Backman train sets. Other than that, we got the oval of tracks. If you look closely, we got a whole bunch of curves and a couple of straight. So I want you to know the color of the track. Uh, this track is black. They also have another one that is gray. A lot of time the one that are gonna come in train set is black and the other one you have to buy them separately. The main reason for this is because all the black one, well, they are made out of steel and the gray one they're made out of nickel silver. Finally, on the second pile of track, we have two straights, one for top and bottom of the oval, and the rest is all curved like the first pile that you saw. They are also all black, and uh, because of this, uh, they're all in steel. Now there's a bit debate about steel versus nickel silver. Some people prefer the look of steel because it's more realistic. Other people prefer nickel silver because it's a lot less maintenance. Well, we've got steel with this one. So this is what we're gonna use today. 
so beside this, we've got documentation. First of all, a list of everything that's in there. Then, a couple of publicities concerning more track packs that you can get for this. Then we've got the instruction for the locomotive. And a general manual on how the easy track system works. We're gonna look at it, uh, I'm talking about the track here, in just a moment. Rest is if you want to get a catalog and some warranty information that nobody's really interested about. So, this is a locomotive that will come in this set. It's an F7A by Electromotive Division. Here is the exploded view. So, these locomotive and starter sets, they're not super detailed or anything like that but they usually run wells and do the job. So, if you want to look at it, let's look at it a bit closer. So, here it is. There is not much detail on it, obviously. This is a starter set. It's pretty basic, but it does the job. One thing that does not show very well on the camera is the grill that is all over the place here. Well, this has some metallic paint in, uh, from not too far, it actually looks like it's etched or something. So that's actually a pretty good molding there. You have a door in front with the horse. The horse is very, very crisp. I think there will be a light in there, but we're just gonna see it once we uh, power it up. Got a couple of painted wipers on the screens. There is no interior, we see the wire directly. The horns on top, they're separately fitted. But every other detail is molded. Couple of things about this. It's all-wheel drive, all-wheel pickup. According to the exploded view, it doesn't seem like there is any type of uh, uh, flywheel in this. I will wait all the wagon together a bit later. Oh, okay. So, second wagon appear to be a hopper wagon of some sort, Norfolk's and Western. It comes with a load. As you can see, the load is removable. Actually, before we show that. Yeah, there's quite a few, there's quite a few uh, rivets molded on it. So I guess you have the choice. Do you want to have the load in it or not? So if you want to have it empty, that's, that's, that seems to be pretty fine. If you want to add some weight, because this seems pretty, pretty light, uh, just put this on top and then the weight are hidden. A couple of things I noticed though, wheels, they're plastic. Uh, decently freewheeling. And those coupling, well they're slightly different from the one I saw on the locomotive. Uh, the one on the locomotive had some sort of metal uh, spring on it. This one just seems to have a, a little plastic bits that is used as a spring. And I don't know if you can see this. I don't like those coupling, but uh, usually in train set, that, that's the way that Bachman does it. The livery on it, black with white lettering. Lettering seems to be pretty crisp, lots of rivets, all molded. So, not a bad looking wagon, even if it's on the simpler side. So, let's take a look at the gondola wagon now.
So ironically, this is a much smaller wagon than the Hopper, but it is it, it's, it is heavier. So I think there must be like a metal plate or something in there. Um, again, I don't know how well it shows on the camera, but this one is a nice shiny aluminum finish. Oh, interesting, it is also full of rivets inside. I think this one is much better than the uh, hoppers in terms of uh, detail. You can see you have a, a separately metal brake wheels, uh, correction, it's plastic, but there's a separately uh, applied brake wheel right here. Unfortunately, wheels are in plastic, not as free wheeling as metal ones would be. And the plastic, not the, yeah, the uh, plastic coupling here also don't have a metal spring. It's it's a plastic spring. So we'll see how that turns out. Yeah, this one is decent. So let's take a look at the caboose. So here you go. The caboose. Obviously there's no interior detail in there. It has the basic Norfolk Southern livery. What is that? The roof is also pretty reflective. Looks like it's made out of aluminum. two ends on it with railings and uh, the brake wheel also seems to be separately fitted here again uh, a bit of a pity plastic wheels although these seems to roll a lot more freely and those uh, those very plasticky easy make coupling with no metal spring Okay, so let me uh, get the scale and uh, we'll weight all of this. I guess this one also has a decent weight on. Okay, so let's put the scale down there. Okay, first the loco. Two hundred and fifty-eight grams. Not bad, not bad. Then let's take the upper wagon. Seventy grams. The gondola, 66 grams. Oh, okay, well, it, it's lighter. I thought it was gonna be heavier than the other one, but uh, it sure feels heavier. And the caboose, 89 grams. So yeah, this one really do it, really is heavier than the other one. Normally, for the tail wagon, I would prefer it was the other way around. Because when you have lighter wagon in the middle of large trains, they tend to derail. Okay, what about the tracks? Well, the easy track were one of the first tracks that I can remember that had A road bed included with them that allows them to uh, work on those carpets now because it's one of the first ones I just want to point out that it's not the best one out there I much prefer the Cato or other types of, uh, uh, of tracks with the bed included with it because this one actually you have to align everything there you go 
So it's best to put it on a straight surface and clip them together. However, for the purpose that we are having today, uh, I wanted to show it up close. So let's build the oval. And I'll be right back. So the oval is almost all built. The only one which are left is one piece of curve and a special piece of straight. Just wanted to show it up close. This is what Backman call a re-railer. It's also where you're gonna plug in the power source right here. So what I was saying about it's not my favorite type of track. Well, let me show you again. I'm gonna try to align them. It's very easy to not be entirely straight and see see what happened right here okay this is what can happen so you have to be extra careful when you're assembling these because if you have just one of these not at the right place it can lead to derailment or poor conductivity so one of the thing you can do once this is done to make sure that everything is okay let me just connect it here And here, you can actually just tape your finger and go over the track. And if you spot any place where there's a little indent, you better check that fish place, like this. And then you do the whole circle. So. For the intent of now, uh, I've checked them off camera and they're all in the correct place. Okay, so what about power? We're gonna take the Backman power supply with the power cord. Plug the power supply. Gonna plug the power. No. Good. Now I'm pretty far from the wall, so I'm just gonna use a battery inverter like this one just for this demonstration. And I'm gonna put it on the side here. And then once everything is hooked up, you hook the power supply. It's a good practice to hook it last. So there you go. Once you see that red light over there, you know that there is power applied to it. So, there is no re-railer that came in the kit. Let me double, double check again. There is no re-railer. So, it's not as bad as N-Scale. N-Scale can be hard, especially for younger children. HO scale still requires a bit of scales to put the wheels on the tracks. But if you put your two fingers on each side of the bogey, it should be pretty easy. Also, that re-railer there, that can help you. So put this one here, looking at the first one, so it looks to be reasonably freewheeling. Okay, last car. Okay, one other thing I noted, unless you are on the straight section there, they're pretty hard to hook up. And finally, the locomotive.
Again, unless you are on the straight section, it will not hook up. So, is this gonna work? Is this gonna go forward or reverse if it works? Place your bet. Oh, forward it is. So right now I'm at about 25% power. It's working reasonably well, pretty smooth. Now normally you may want to run in these things um, before you hook stuff up to it, but I mean this is pretty light. So I don't think it's going to affect it uh, uh, a lot. So let me just increase the power. This is where it is right now. I'm going to bring it to 50%. It does make a noise. It's not a particularly loud noise. But it's very, very smooth. Even without being run in with a couple of wagons. So now I'm at about 10% power. It still runs fine. I'm gonna say it's pretty smooth. See, if you want to see where this is, this is where it is right now. And that is with the uh, default Backman uh, controller, the one I'm using right now. What about reverse? Okay. This is where it started to kick in. Very nice, very smooth. Doesn't seem to cog or anything. The train set locomotive sure has come a long way. Used to be you had just one bogey that was powered, now it's all wheel drive, all wheel pickup. Quite nice actually. Let me try to bring it down to a crawl. Oh, it stopped. Okay. Well, that was too low. Oh, okay, it started again as soon as I brought it up. So it didn't cut out, it was just struggling. But I was really, really going low. So uh, the question that we all have, how can I make $2 billion in a day? Uh, yeah, well, I'm not gonna answer this one. I'm gonna answer another one. Does it have lights? Because it appears from what I saw that it did. So let me bring it to a reasonable speed and take a look. Yes, it does have light, but it's very, very dim. And I'm not sure this is an LED. It might even be an incandescent light because of the color it has. So, now that it's all said and done, what do I think about this? Well, first of all, it works out of the box. That's more than what can be said for other trains that are, I uh, showed, uh, especially the Chinese Thomas train that uh, you can probably just uh, see if you click in this uh, link over there. Or alternatively, I'll put the link in the description if you can access it. So, uh, yeah, it works out of the box. Now this locomotive is very very simple. Okay, there's no 
special details, but I have to say that the livery that's on it, the livery is very good. And you know, because of the livery, I kind of like it. It's it's black, It's it has a nice finish, semi-glossy, doesn't look like a toy really. And uh, you know, as long as you're like three feet apart, it looks fine. If you look close though, you're gonna see like a, this is not a light, this is a blob of paint and all that kind of stuff. But you know, that grid, the fact that they've painted it like an aluminum color, that, that really stands out, almost looks like it's etched. There's no interior details, who cares? The windows are very, very small, you won't see them much. Uh, the light, the light, uh, you know, I, I'm gonna open this up off camera and check to see if uh, it's uh, an LED light, but I really do think from the color it was that this was an incandescent light. Actually, you know what, let's just take a look directly in the exploded view, because we have it right here. Okay, so the exploded view doesn't show any light. Oh well. So, other than that, the uh, cars themselves, well, the, the, the cars... Uh, this one here... Well, I'm, I'm not too sure about this one. It's black, yes, it's, it's just a regular hopper car. But the bogey, the bogey and the wheels, I mean, they... they doesn't stand out to me as being very interesting. I would definitely change those wheels for metal one and probably change the couplers also because these I mean I can guarantee you that these are not gonna last. Also maybe it's just because it's just a black livery I don't find it really interesting. This one on the other hand though I like it. It has a nice finish, nice livery and uh, you know, more, it seems more quality. I know it's lighter, but because it's a smaller wagon, when you have it in your hands, it actually feels heavier. So this, I like. The caboose, well, the caboose would look 10 times better with glazing. Um, other than that, well, again, the plastic wheels I don't like. And in all of those wagons, well, the, the these are not gonna last. These couplers, you'll want to change them. Might be enough to get you started, but as soon as you get to have more stuff, I don't see them as being very reliable. And in fact, each time I had some of these, they pretty much broke within the first use. So, yep, I would change those coupling. So, once this is said, let's get to recommendation. Is it a pass or a fail? Well, to begin with, as a first train set, it's not a bad idea. I would certainly not use the track for an, ex an actual long-term layout. Uh, first of all, they're made out of steel, so you gotta have more... Uh, you're gonna spend more time cleaning them, because they're gonna get dirty quicker, and you have conductivity problem. Also, I would probably change most of these coupling, if not all. Change all the wheels. You can expect this to cost you maybe around 50 bucks for everything. The power pack itself, well, it's good. It's just one amp. So it's fine for maybe one to three locomotive. But if you ever have more than a locomotive and you want to run... I mean, I'd probably get, uh, get something a bit stronger. Some of you guys have mentioned about DCC in the past. And no, this is not DCC ready. However... Uh, if you know how to solder, it's pretty easy to do. You just need to match uh, some wires. So, long term, what can you expect out of this? Well, I think the locomotive is going to be good for long term. Uh, it is, uh, you know, it, it has a decent amount of power. It's not the heaviest one there is around. 
but uh, it has you know all wheel pickup, all wheel uh, power. So yeah, uh, the locomotive uh, definitely I, uh, I can see it in staying in someone's connection for long, even if you start to have more serious model. And the livery on it is it, I mean it just makes it looks good from a, a distance. So, what do you think about this? Do you think that uh, this is too basic for you? Do you think that uh, this is something you would give to someone? I know this is something I would give to someone. The price of it, Christmas is going to come in a few months. Wait for it to come down a bit. Right now they're over $200 uh, Canadian. But I think this one was paid last year at $99 in special. So these prices, they, they go up and down. Wait for it to go down. Could make for a nice present. The only thing, this is just a pure oval. Okay? So, uh, I mean, whoever you're going to give this to may get bored after a while. So unless they buy more tracks, and I mean easy tracks here if you want to reuse that oval. Well... After five minutes, uh, it's pretty much the same thing going round and round and round. So, I would encourage you to uh, provide the, that person with a set of points or something to, to have them do something uh, more interesting than just look at the train going around and around. So, on that note, should you buy it? If you find it at the right price, yeah, sure. But I wouldn't pay extra for those tracks. Because I don't think you're going to use them in something else. On that note, I wish you all have a good day. And I'll see you in the next video. Leeway Model, out.